Hey everyone, Ben Falk here, ready to walk you through how I use cleaning the glass stats to analyze a player. This video will focus just on a player's profile page. Now right off the jump, I just want to make clear, this is not a complete analysis. As I've written and said many times before, you're not going to do a complete analysis of a player simply based on stats. You need to do extensive video work to supplement what you learn here. That said, it can be a great jumping off point. It can be a great quick way to get a sense of what's going on with that player. And so throughout this video, I'll be keeping some notes in this notepad, some questions that we come up with that we want to analyze further based on what we learn, just to reinforce that point, that this is not the end. This is not a wrapped up analysis. This is the beginning of something that I would want to investigate further. And with that, let's get to the analysis. So the if you go to a player, if you use the search box, go to any player page, the first thing that you will see as it pops up is this profile section and this offensive overview section. And there's a reason why, which is because the first thing that I want to get a sense for when I'm looking at a player like this based on these advanced stats is just what their role and efficiency looks like within the offense. So you can see that's what this table is going to show you. We have, as with all the tables on the profile page, this biographical information on the left. You can see the player's age in any given year, the team that they were on the position grouping according to the site. So in Bam's case, that is just that he was a big in each year that he's played. And then some traditional stats, games played, games started, minutes per game. Just looking at that, quickly we get a sense, okay, in his first two years, he was a spot starter, played about 20 minutes a game, and this last year we see a big jump in roll starting every single game that he played in and averaging 34 minutes a game. That same jump and roll we can see as we move to the right in this table to the first advanced stat that we see here, usage rate. Now usage is a measure of how much of the team's offense the player is responsible for, as best as we can estimate based on these stats. We think of usage as creation. So how much offense is this player creating? That's why cleaning the glass uses a slightly different measure than you might see elsewhere. I try to adjust for how assisted the player is, and I involve assists in the calculation because we're trying to look at what is this player really creating. You'll see that players who play off the pass a lot and don't have large offensive roles will have very low usage rates, and those that are big time creators will have very high usage rates. The story that this stat tells about Adebayo is similar to even just what we saw with minutes, which is a large increase in role this past year. His first two seasons, the usage, his usage rate stayed about the same. We see this percentile showing 48 and 45, meaning he's about the middle of the pack for big men. Remember, these percentiles are compared to the position grouping that we saw here. He's about middle of the pack for big, he was about middle of the pack for big men in his first two seasons. And this past year jumped up to the 86th percentile that he clearly used him in a much larger capacity, taking on a much larger role of the offense this past season. So let's put that in our notes. Much larger role this year. How did it change? What did the Heat have him do differently? So that can be a question that we want to answer, that we can answer through video. Something we can tell from this stat, something changed. And a question that we want to try to answer with either more advanced stats, maybe some of the play type stats, or through videos, we can say, well, let's see what's actually different. As we move on, we don't want to just look at how much of the offensive players using, but also how efficient they were in 
using that offense. That's where points per shot attempt comes in. This gives us a sense of the player's efficiency when attempting to score the ball. This accounts both for field goal attempts and for trips to the free throw line. And the story we see here is that in Bam's first season, about middle of the pack in his points per shot attempt last year, just no change in usage, but he became much more efficient scoring the ball. This season, what's very interesting is that as much as his points per shot attempt took a hit, it didn't take a particularly large hit. And that's very encouraging given how much he scaled up his usage. Oftentimes, we will see that higher usage means lower efficiency because the larger role that you have on offense usually means that you're taking more difficult shots. If you know, a player has a very low usage. Often that means they're being set up by teammates. They're only taking the shots that are most open. They're not attempting difficult shots. As their usage scales up, they have to take, they have to make riskier plays. They have to take more difficult shots that he's able to add so much to his usage without a huge hit to his efficiency is a very good sign. As we move to the right in this table, we can see the passing stats. And you can see from the beginning, Bam was a good passer. So 75th percentile in assist percentage for big men. 84th percentile his second year. And that's despite these middle of the pack usage rates. So he's not creating a ton of offense, but he's racking up a pretty high number of assists. That's where this next stat comes in, assist to usage ratio. Assist percentage is just how many, what percentage of his teammates assists, uh, teammates made baskets did he assist on. But that's influenced by how much he has the ball and how much he's being asked to create in the offense. Assist to usage ratio tries to adjust for that. It says, okay, relative to how much he had the ball, what was his assist rate? And what we see here is from the beginning, 82nd percentile and 91st percentile in 2018-19, we already knew that he had some passing talent. That maybe gave the heat a hint that he could scale up his offensive usage rate since he was already creating offense. But we should put down here on our notes, impressive passer early where do his assists come from? That would be a question I would have. We can see he has a high assist rate. What type of assists are they? Is he passing out of the post and creating that way? Is he handling, you know, so I'm saying early in his career, was he handling uh, up top? Were they already putting him in actions where he was finding cutters? Are they simple handoffs? Maybe there's a lot of handoff action in the Heat offense. And so he's racking up assists that aren't really what we traditionally think of as shot creation. These are all things that we can try to answer as we dive deeper into the film or if we have access to more advanced stats. But regardless, we can see this this season, his assist rate jumped all the way to the 98th percentile for big men, a very impressive number. Now, of course, his usage rate also jumped. So the question is, how much of that is just a product of having more of a role in the offense. And again, that's where this assist to usage ratio comes in. It shows us that even taking into account the fact that his usage rate went up, his assist to usage rate also went up. He has a higher assist rate relative to how much he has the ball than he had before. And that, that number even is on the 98th percentile, suggesting that he's he, this year he's one of the best passing big men in the entire NBA. The last column we'll look at here, turnover percentage. Now, clear from this chart that this is a weakness of his. It's likely a result of being so passing oriented. It's clear that as a passer, as a shot creator, the plays that he's making are not without risk. So that goes back to what we were saying. His assists are probably not the simple type or he wouldn't be getting, he wouldn't be having so many turnovers 
on them. But that's another question that we can try to investigate is where are those turnovers coming from? If they're coming from really high risk reward type of situations where if this is successful, his team is getting, say, an open basket at the rim, then we're more tolerant of that. If these turnovers are a byproduct of something else, that's where we'd be a little worried that this is coming along with the package of BAM or something he needs to improve on. It's just a question of where are these turnovers coming from and how worried might we be. Where are his turnovers coming from? From passes or something else. 